So in a story that seems to have been going on forever and really hasn't had a whole lot of major updates, it looks as though there actually are some updates coming out now, at least in the Kung Lee lawsuit against the UFC. And in this lawsuit, he was claiming that the UFC was a monopoly. And in some of the court filings, at least now we're starting to get some actual info on the UFC. Obviously, the UFC uh, was privately held by Zufa, so they didn't, were under no obligation to release their financial statements. Uh, so people didn't really know what sort of revenue they were taking in, uh, what their expenses were, anything like that. Um, and then when they got picked up, in 2016 uh they were still under a private company although now the company that owns them wme did go public uh but it looks as though this lawsuit is really where most of the information came out so this um uh, particular article was written by dave Meltzer. Uh, so we'll go through it so it says the question of exactly how much the UFC pays its fighters was answered in court court hearings in monday on monday in las vegas um the judge's name is franklin bulware uh, this is just talking about what the or what the lawsuit was about. All right, so what what it's saying here is that UFC fighters received 26 percent of company gross revenue in 2007, and that number steadily declined until 2011, where it remained steady between 19 and 20 percent. Um, that figure is slightly higher than 13 to 14 percent that was estimated at the time of the company's sale in 2016, and far higher than the media speculation of six to eight percent. All right. Uh, so then saying the number was, has been staying, saying the number has been staying steady since then. Um, and that's good because the revenue growth has also been fairly steady as well. Uh, they're saying this year due to the ESPN deals for television and streaming rights, uh, revenue should be a lot higher. And so in theory, if they also are still paying the 19 to 20%, that means fighter pay is also going up, which is good. Uh, so they're saying in all, the UFC paid approximately $626 million to fighters between September 1st, 2011 and August 31st, 2017. So that's a six-year period, so averaging a little over $100 million a year. Uh, and that hovered to close to 20% of revenue each year. In addition, uh, there's evidence that the UFC had forecasted $980 million in revenue for 2020, and they estimated that fighter pay would be $196 million, so 20%. So it looks as though one of the questions that I had when the ESPN deal started is that it looked like they were definitely increasing their revenue. So the question was, was fighter pay going to go up as well? It looks like that is the case. So whether that means that that fighter pay is going into paying for more fighters as they're expanding to more markets, uh, raising the um, raising the wages of the guys they currently have or both, it, it seems like they are at least increasing, or at least they're projecting to increase. So we'll see if that actually ends up becoming true. But based off what they're saying here, it seems as though even after the sale, they've still been able to keep revenue set or keep um, revenue share steady with the fighters. Uh, then they're saying one of the arguments, and this is an argument I see a lot online, is that the other major sports leagues, the NFL, NBA, MLB, and NHL, pay close to 50%. Those sports have unions in place that are part of the reason why. One of the things that I think people need to understand, though, is that there's just like this assumption that, well, if these other leagues pay 50% of their revenue to players, then therefore the UFC should do that as well. There's no obligation for the UFC to pay 50%. There's no obligation for any business to pay 50% of their revenue to a specific type of employee or a specific type of um, worker. It's worth noting, and this is the case with the other leagues too, but this is especially the case in the UFC where it's really event by event. They have to pay all their corporate staff. So that means all the marketing people, all the salespeople, operations people. Um, they do a lot of their own production too. I think in most cases or a lot of big sports, they have the network handle production. The UFC handles all of its own production. So there are plenty of other employment costs that the UFC has to pay on top of that 20% of revenue. So if you look at the total amount of, and again, we don't know what those numbers are, but you would have to imagine that the amount of money that the UFC spends on both employees and also the independent contractors that these fighters are, they're paying a pretty significant portion of their top line revenue. Um, and then there's a bunch of other costs as well. So they're obviously the marketing costs. So anytime you, you see a big um, billboard for a UFC event, uh, you're watching TV and an ad pops up. These are all expenses that come off of that top line revenue um, before they end up getting to the bottom line and being profitable or not. So it's not as though the UFC is under any obligation to pay a fat chunk to a specific type of employee or a specific, I guess they're not employees, but a specific type of worker. I, I don't buy that at all. So you'd have to know the full financial statements to know like how much they're like, what sort of um, income percentage they're, they're ending up with. So if they make a hundred million dollars after they pay, if it's 20 million or if it's 20%, then 20 million to the fighters and cover all the other expenses, how much are they keeping? I would imagine that, they're not keeping 30 million of that. So if you're saying that they should be 50%, then you're saying that they should, in, in that case, they should actually be losing money. So to me, the 20% number really doesn't seem like that big of an issue. Now, one of the other points brought up here is that other organizations like Strikeforce paid more. So Strikeforce paid 63% of revenue. Um, Bellator paid 44.7%. 
short selling the strike force was not in a great financial situation. Their investors bailed on them, and that's why they sold to the UFC. Bellator has sort of had their ups and downs. They, were, they had that little moment where they were signing away a lot of the top talent from the UFC. So they took away Ryan Bader. They took away Rory, Mc, Rory McDonald. Um, they got Gegard Mousasi. A lot of that was happening around 2017, but it seems like they've really cooled off on that lately. So maybe them trying to outbid the UFC for these guys in, in doing so, they may have realized that they were overpaying for those fighters. So the UFC was actually paying closer to a fair market rate for them. Um, but again, we've seen so many promotions come and go that have tried to compete with the UFC, like Affliction and other um, other shows where they try to pay the fighters what the fighters seem to think they're worth. And what ends up happening is they don't get the return on the investment. And as a result, the money spent is greater than the money they get in return and they go out of business. So to me, seeing that the UFC pays around 20%, that doesn't really... It, it still lacks context, kind of like I said before. Like you, you have to get the full context in terms of what their other costs are, um, and and what their um, net income is. And again, there's nothing morally wrong about making a profit. So even if they they get a decent profit, that's not necessarily a bad thing. And if they're still growing, and if it, as they continue to grow, if they're still continuing to pay a similar percentage of revenue, to me, it really doesn't seem that bad, honestly. Like I I don't know what I expected out of this, but. If this is if the information here is true, it really doesn't look that bad for the UFC at all. So we'll we'll see what happens as this case goes along. We'll see if the case um, gets shut down here if they continue to move it along. But based off the information that we at least have in this article article here from Dave Meltzer, I, I really have a hard time being upset with the UFC or feeling that like they were doing it, they're doing anything wrong here. 